or you are a loved one struggling with high iron levels, maybe you've been diagnosed with iron overload or hemochromatosis, or perhaps you're just trying to effectively manage your iron levels through diet or other means. My name is Dr. Terranella, and this channel is dedicated to helping you understand and optimize your health. In this video, we're gonna explore the best diet to eat if you have iron overload or hemochromatosis. We'll look at research showing the importance of different dietary choices on iron overload and specifically hemochromatosis, and also cover some surprising things that may play just as big a role as genetics in managing your iron overload. If you're finding these videos helpful and useful, hit the like and subscribe button to keep getting videos like this. All right, let's look at the best diet for iron overload. <laughs> So before we get into the video details on the best diet for iron overload, we want to look at what iron overload is a little bit before we jump into that. So iron overload occurs when the body is storing too much iron. So this is a common scenario in people with hereditary hemochromatosis, in particular those with certain genetic mutations in the HFE gene. Now there are other reasons people can have iron overload as well. You can check out my other videos on those if you want a more broader range of iron overload and what that means. But in these conditions, it's crucial to manage your iron levels because excessively high iron can lead to all kinds of problems in your body, like damage to your liver, damage to your endocrine system, and basically going to speed up the aging process, which obviously isn't good. Other health problems that could occur as well as like heart disease, diabetes, and of course, liver damage. So I thought I would do a video on the best diet for iron overload because a viewer dropped a question and they said something along these lines. My husband has hemochromatosis and he loves to eat meat. He's eating it three times a day. His iron levels, which I assume she was referring to ferritin here, are just over 400. Should he change his eating habits or will this have a big impact on his iron levels? And I think I got another similar question from a viewer suggesting that their doctor said diet is not going to change the iron levels. So it caused me to question my understanding of this. And so I went to some research papers to try to better understand this question. And the answer may seem quite obvious to some of you as it did to me, but we're also going to cover some not so obvious things that I learned looking at this research. So what role does diet play in iron overload? Is there a role at all? Well, the answer is yes, there is. Diet does play a significant role in manage, managing your iron levels. And if you have genetics for hemochromatosis, maybe you're basically told you're doomed and you're just going to have iron overload. So there's nothing you can do. Well, it may not be as bad as you think, but the type of iron you eat can make a big difference in whether or not you're going to have problems or potentially have no problems. Obviously, the body needs some iron, and when you have hemochromatosis, there's no braking system on how much iron your body's going to absorb. So you're really good at absorbing iron, and you don't have to worry about not getting enough. But there are different types of iron. So there's a difference between heme iron and non-heme iron. So the iron found in meats, especially red meat, is heme iron. So the heme meaning hemoglobin from your blood. So basically all animals have heme iron. And this type of iron, your body is more efficient at naturally absorbing, even if you don't have hemochromatosis. So these types of iron can significantly raise your iron levels. And if you have iron overload, it's definitely advisable to limit the amount of iron that you're consuming in the way of red meat or heme iron. Keep in mind too that the four-legged animals are going to have much more iron in them, much more red blood in them compared to two-legged animals. So things like turkey, chicken, fish are going to have less of that heme iron in them. So those are oftentimes a better option. Then again, it depends how bad your case is. You may have to limit those too, at least initially. Non-heme iron is iron that's coming from plant bases. And non-heme iron is not really absorbed that efficiently. Foods like beans and lentils and spinach may be rich in iron, but they're not going to be as bad for you because they're not going to be, be as absorbable. Now, you still may want to limit some of those in the case that you have hemochromatosis, but you may not have to worry about those as much as something like eating beef or eating pork. So to me, it's obvious that limiting your red meat is going to be a big influence on 
people with iron overload, but there are some additional nuanced things that we're going to go into here. And so another thing to think about is limiting the amount of things that you're consuming that improve or increase iron absorption. So these are things that are rich in vitamin C. While vitamin C is healthy for all of us, you don't want to take your vitamin C when you have iron overload conditions. That is, you don't want to take uh, vitamin C close to iron-rich meals. So if you're avoiding red meat, but you have your spinach salad, for instance, or some other iron-rich food, you don't want to take vitamin C with it. So you can take vitamin C, you just want to take it away from your meals. Alcohol also may be and has been shown to increase iron absorption as well and may exacerbate iron overload. So reducing alcohol consumption may be important as well. This may have to do with how it impacts the liver. And we'll break that down in a little more detail here as we go. So now I want to discuss a key study that I found that provides some good insights and context into managing iron overload through diet when you are someone that has hemochromatosis or genetics for it or just iron overload. So this study out of the UK involved over 35,000 women and explored the relationship between dietary iron intake, HFE or hemochromatosis genotype and iron status. And these were postmenopausal women. They provided a cheek sample for genetic analysis and did blood sample measurements to look at iron storage markers like ferritin. And basically they were trying to understand or aim to understand how diet and genetics might influence iron levels. And so here are some of the straightforward or obvious findings that they found from the study. Number one was heme iron from meat was strongly associated with higher serum ferritin levels. In other words, eating lots of meat significantly increased your iron stores. Women with the HFE genotype mutation, the C282Y gene mutation, especially in postmenopausal women, had much higher ferritin concentrations. So this just further emphasizes the relationship between that particular gene mutation, the C282Y, that is more associated with iron accumulation more associated with not having the ability to break the amount of iron that's coming in. And this is opposed to some of the other hemochromatosis genotypes. However, not everyone with the C282Y mutation develop iron overload. And this just further highlights the importance of diet and lifestyle in managing the condition to begin with. These are the findings of this study. So if you think that your genes are the only factor in managing iron overload, when, especially when you have hemochromatosis, Think again, your diet can have a major impact on managing your iron levels, even if you do have the hemochromatosis genotype C282Y. Here are some of the other unexpected findings or insights from this study. Despite being fortified with iron, consumption of white and brown bread was associated with lower ferritin concentrations. So this just suggests fortification may not be as effective in raising iron stores but it could also reflect that these people just tended to eat more bread and less red meat as well. Another thing is that calcium supplementation positively associated with higher iron levels. And this goes against the common belief that calcium inhibits iron absorption. The exact mechanism of how calcium is helping with iron absorption isn't clear. The other thing which we mentioned earlier is that alcohol intake was consistently associated with higher ferritin levels. The study authors proposed that this could be due to increased intestinal permeability of the iron, but alcohol is not typically associated in discussions with causing increased iron levels or causing iron overload. But I think in this case, what's happening is you're probably getting more inflammation in the liver, which could then be affecting the hepcidin production and that inflammation then triggering ferritin to be scavengered up versus allowing it to be free floating throughout the body. That would be my guess in those cases, rather than some kind of increased intestinal permeability. Of course, both could be going on at the same time. So some practical tips and takeaways. Managing iron overload effectively requires considering both diet and lifestyle factors. And while this study was more of an observational based study, it may be hinting at some very important things beyond the obvious of avoiding red meat, and avoiding vitamin C around meals. Some of the practical takeaways for me is absolutely you should be avoiding red meat or limiting red meat when you have hemochromatosis. And that doesn't mean you can never consume it, but you want to, generally speaking, eat a lower diet that's lower in heme iron in general. Instead, for your protein sources, you may want to use things like beans, lentils, 
and whole grains in your diet, even if they're fortified with iron, may not lead to much of a problem with iron overload. Being mindful of vitamin C consumption is also obviously important, especially around food. Reducing alcohol consumption, both from its impact on the liver and how that's going to affect your hepcidin and raise your ferritin levels, and also possibly due to changing the absorption rate of iron further through changes in intestinal permeability is also an important factor to consider. Things like beans, nuts, and even whole grains can change how your iron is being absorbed. Tea and coffee also contain polyphenols that can also reduce iron absorption around meals. For those that have iron overload hemochromatosis, you're going to definitely want to think about managing that with regular blood donations. That's going to reduce your ferritin levels and reduce your iron. And then also understanding your specific genetics. If you suspect that you have some kind of iron overload condition, getting a genetic screening for and understanding which type of HFE gene mutation you have can provide you with some additional context of how aggressive you need to be about this. For instance, if you have the HFE C282Y genotype, you're probably going to want to be even more cautious. And then, of course, you can also inform your family members that they may also want to get screened when you come up positive on yours. So managing iron overload, definitely you want to consider dietary factors and making good informed choices on your diet because it's going to limit the amount of blood donation and limit the amount of management you have to do week by week, month by month to reduce the complications and reduce the amount of iron that's coming in. Remember, even if you have a normal ferritin level, the amount of iron that comes in each time you consume iron-rich foods is what's going to potentially damage those tissues. And so when you get flooded by a bunch of iron all at once, especially if you consume it on multiple days in a row, that's more likely to actually damage the tissues in your body. And that's in the context of even having normal ferritin levels. So hopefully this video helps you better understand how to manage iron overload with diet, and hopefully it helps you understand your health and what's going on in your body in a more nuanced way. If you have questions about anything on this topic surrounding iron overload and diet, drop them in the comment sections. That's why I do the videos to help you understand what's going on. So leave it in the comments. If you want a more customized, nuanced answer, consider joining the membership program. We'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your question. Thanks again for watching and until next time might I interest you in this other video on iron right here.